What happens when the most advanced scientists in the galaxy encounter a phenomenon so unpredictable, so destabilizing, that even their greatest minds cannot comprehend it? The research station orbiting the star Zeiler 7 had been the epitome of scientific achievement, a hub of discovery pushing the boundaries of interstellar knowledge. But today, it was facing an anomaly that no alien could explain or contain, a localized pulsing disruption in space-time defying every known law of physics. All readings indicate catastrophic failure within the hour, the lead scientist, Dr. Thicks, announced, his voice betraying a rare hint of unease. Around him, alien technicians scrambled, their eyes darting across control panels and readouts, systems flashing red, alarms blaring. Protocol after protocol was failing. And then, the doors slid open. A single human technician strolled in, coffee in hand, as if he had simply walked into another typical day at work. The alien crew froze, staring at him in bewilderment. Surely he didn't understand the gravity of the situation. But to their utter disbelief, the human simply looked at the anomaly with a slight shrug, muttered something under his breath, and calmly started assessing the situation. They watched in stunned silence as he took a sip of coffee, cracked his knuckles, and smiled as if facing a minor inconvenience, not a potentially life-ending crisis. This story will take you through a day when an alien station faced the unthinkable, and the one human on board treated it like just another Monday. What's the most Monday thing that's ever happened to you? Let us know in the comments below. The Galactic Research Station hovering over Xyler 7 was a marvel of technology, built by the Alliance of Intelligent Species. It was the crown jewel of research facilities, hosting scientists from every corner of the galaxy. The aliens on board were specialists, mathematicians, physicists, engineers, all rigorously trained to handle even the most unusual phenomena. Today, however, no training could have prepared them for what they faced. Dr. Thix, a seasoned researcher from the planet Marak III, stood at the helm. His eight tentacle-like limbs, usually calm and steady, fidgeted as he reviewed the endless stream of data pouring in. The anomaly had begun as a slight fluctuation, a gentle ripple that quickly morphed into a chaotic, pulsing wave disrupting everything from the station's gravity field to its communication systems. How is it possible for a disturbance of this magnitude to appear without warning? murmured Tula, one of the station's quantum analysts. Her three eyes blinked in rapid succession, a sign of both confusion and mounting fear. Dr. Thix cleared his throat. All calculations indicate this anomaly should be, well, impossible. It's affecting localized space-time, creating gravitational fluctuations and strange particle behavior that defy every model we have. We've run every simulation, and none suggest this outcome. The assembled crew exchanged nervous glances. They were the best in their fields, experts in every discipline of scientific study. But for the first time in their careers, they found themselves truly helpless. They turned to the protocols, the meticulously designed safety procedures meant to handle every conceivable disaster. And yet, protocol after protocol failed to contain the disturbance. As the anomaly pulsed closer to the center of the station, even the station's artificial gravity began to destabilize, causing tools and equipment to drift lazily into the air. Everyone, stay calm, Dr. Thicks ordered, though his voice lacked its usual authority. If we maintain order and focus, we'll find a solution. But deep down, he knew they were running out of options. Just as panic was beginning to simmer, the doors slid open with a gentle whoosh. Every head turned as a human technician entered the control room, wearing the standard-issue overalls and holding a cup of what the aliens identified as earth beverage caffeinated. The technician, named Jake, took a casual sip, glanced at the floating tools around him, and shrugged as if he'd seen it all before. So, what's going on here, he asked, his tone nonchalant. The silence was palpable. Dr. Thix's voice wavered. Jake, please, we're facing an unprecedented event. This anomaly, it's destabilizing the entire station. Protocols have failed, simulations are ineffective, and every attempt to understand it has led us nowhere. Jake raised an eyebrow, sipping his coffee as if contemplating the day's weather. Huh, sounds like a real mess. Well, I've seen worse. Tula's three eyes widened in astonishment. 
Worse, this is a catastrophic disruption of space-time itself. How could you possibly have encountered something more severe? Jake chuckled. Oh, believe me, you'd be surprised. I worked maintenance back on Earth. Kept some pretty old tech running. Things break. You learn to work with what you've got. Dr. Thicks exchanged glances with the rest of his team, a mixture of disbelief and awe etched into their alien features. Here they were, the greatest minds in the galaxy, staring at a human who didn't seem to fully grasp the gravity of their predicament. Or maybe he just didn't care. A faint tremor shook the station, and the alarm system flared up again. Dr. Thix turned back to Jake, his voice tinged with desperation. Jake, our equipment and simulations aren't providing any useful data. Our only hope is to stabilize the anomaly long enough to perform a controlled shutdown. Jake set his coffee cup on the nearest console, rolling his shoulders. All right, let's see what we're working with. Got any duct tape? Tula's eyes blinked in synchronized shock. Duct tape? How could adhesive tape possibly help with an anomaly of this scale? Trust me, it's more useful than you think, Jake replied with a grin. The alien scientists observed him closely, their expressions a blend of fascination and horror as he rummaged through his toolkit, producing a roll of duct tape, a few basic tools, and a small device they didn't recognize. Jake attached the device to the console, which emitted a series of beeps and hums. The crew watched in stunned silence, trying to comprehend what they were seeing. Was this human improvisation? A last-ditch effort? They'd studied human behaviors extensively, but nothing could have prepared them for this. Dr. Thix broke the silence. Jake, our simulations suggest that attempting to modify the containment field with non-standard equipment could destabilize the anomaly further. Jake shrugged. Sometimes you've just got to trust your gut. He began securing wires and interfaces with duct tape, mumbling as he worked. This kind of thing always happens on Mondays. He glanced up, noticing the bewildered stares from the aliens around him. It's a human thing. Mondays are, well, they're rough. Tula, still utterly confused, muttered, Your species truly is inexplicable. With each passing moment, the team could see the anomaly's pulses slowing, the station's gravity stabilizing incrementally. The crew exchanged looks of disbelief, whispering theories among themselves. Was it possible that something as simple as duct tape was containing the anomaly? Finally, Dr. Thix turned to his team. Record these observations and document this human method. His voice held a mixture of awe and resignation. Perhaps we have underestimated the resilience of Earth beings. Tula couldn't resist a glance at the human, who was now whistling softly as he continued his work. Jake, what exactly is your plan? He flashed a grin. Keep it together, with whatever I've got on hand. My old boss back on Earth always said, If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if it is, fix it with whatever you've got. The aliens exchanged baffled looks grappling with this chaotic approach that seemed to contradict every principle of advanced science they knew. Yet, somehow, it was working. As Jake continued to work, the aliens watched with a mixture of fascination and growing unease. His calm, almost carefree approach to the crisis was unlike anything they had ever witnessed. For species trained to rely on precise calculations and meticulous protocols, this human's nonchalant attitude was downright baffling. Tula leaned closer to Dr. Thix and whispered, Are all humans like this? Facing an anomaly capable of tearing space-time, and he's just humming? Dr. Thix nodded slowly, his gaze fixed on Jake's every move. From what I've studied, humans possess a curious adaptability, a willingness to confront chaos without fear. Perhaps that's why they come from a planet so hostile that even the atmosphere can be lethal under certain conditions. At that, Tula shuddered. Yes, Earth, the death world. I had almost forgotten. Their environment is chaotic by nature. Meanwhile, Jake seemed oblivious to the hushed conversations around him. He paused briefly, pulling out a small device from his toolkit, muttering something about needing a reset. He attached the device to the console, tapped a few buttons, and the beeping from the control panel took on a steadier rhythm. One of the younger alien scientists, Rixor, couldn't contain his curiosity any longer. Excuse me, human Jake. What exactly are you doing? None of our protocols suggest this approach. Your methods, they defy our understanding. 
Jake grinned. Well, sometimes you don't need fancy tech to solve a problem. Back home we have a saying. Keep it simple, stupid. Rixor's brow furrowed, and he glanced at Dr. Thicks for clarification. Simple? We've developed countless algorithms, predictive models, and fail-safes for such events. And yet, you're using tape and basic tools? Jake shrugged. It's about making do with what you've got. You'd be surprised how often simple does the trick. Dr. Thicks glanced at the anomaly, which was now emitting a softer, more rhythmic pulse. He had to admit, something about the human's approach was working. But his mind couldn't reconcile the ease with which Jake tackled the problem, as if he were fixing a leaky pipe rather than a dimensional anomaly. Jake seemed to notice the lingering stares from the aliens. He took a long sip of his coffee, then set it down with a satisfied sigh. Listen, I get it. Where I come from, this wouldn't even make the news. Earth has all sorts of strange stuff, volcanoes, earthquakes, storms that could tear apart buildings. We learn to work around it, or with it. Tula shook her head, almost incredulous. But surely on Earth, you have precise tools and advanced systems to address these natural disasters? Jake laughed. Oh, we try. But when it comes down to it, there's no tool more versatile than duct tape and a little elbow grease. You adapt, you improvise. If you can't stop a problem, you find a way to live with it. Dr. Thix exchanged glances with Tula and Rixor, sensing that Jake's approach, while unconventional, had a certain logic. Perhaps human adaptability stemmed not from an abundance of caution, but from a willingness to embrace the unknown without hesitation. Still, it was hard to fathom. Just then, the station shuddered as a new surge from the anomaly washed over them. The lights flickered, and an alarm blared, a fresh warning that gravity was beginning to destabilize again. Jake looked up, furrowing his brow as he grabbed a nearby console to steady himself. Well, that's new, he muttered, adjusting his grip on a nearby railing. Looks like the anomaly's fighting back. Dr. Thix raised a hand to quiet the alarm. Everyone. Hold your positions. We need to analyze this new fluctuation. Human Jake, what is your next course of action? Jake tapped his chin thoughtfully. I think we're dealing with a resonance issue. This anomaly is like a wave. Every time we try to dampen it, it pushes back harder. Dr. Thix's eyes narrowed in curiosity. A wave? Are you suggesting we approach it like a fluid dynamic problem? Jake gave a lopsided grin. Exactly. We might be able to stabilize it if we counter its rhythm instead of blocking it entirely. Give it something to work against, instead of just resisting it head-on. Rixor blinked, astonished. You're applying hydrodynamic principles to a space-time anomaly? Jake winked. Why not? Sometimes it's all just waves, matter, energy, space. And sometimes you just need a surfboard. The alien scientists exchanged uncertain glances, absorbing Jake's words. He wasn't speaking in the rigid language of their protocols, but somehow, his reasoning seemed sound. Perhaps humans had developed a unique intuition for dealing with chaos, a kind of natural rhythm that allowed them to operate in situations where logic and order failed. Jake moved back to the console, his hands moving swiftly over the controls as he began adjusting the station's shielding frequency. As he worked, he gestured for Dr. Thix to observe. See here, every pulse has a pattern. It's random at first, but if you catch the timing just right, with a few final adjustments, the anomaly's disruptive waves began to ebb, stabilizing into a steady pulse. The aliens watched, breathless, as Jake's methodical but seemingly haphazard approach actually brought the chaos under control. Tula, still wide-eyed, whispered to Dr. Thix, How, how can this be? His methods defy everything we know about controlled science. This isn't how we solve problems. Dr. Thix shook his head slowly, a hint of reverence in his gaze as he watched Jake. Perhaps humans possess an understanding beyond our own. They seem to rely not on precision, but on intuition and adaptability. Jake, noticing their intense expressions, chuckled. Don't overthink it. Sometimes the best solution is just the one that works. Dr. Thix gave him a long, thoughtful look. Human Jake, would you say this approach is what allows your species to thrive on such a dangerous world as Earth? Jake shrugged. Maybe. We're stubborn, too. If there's one thing humans hate, 
It's letting a problem win. So we try. And we keep trying until we figure it out. The alien team fell silent, processing this perspective. It was so different from their own culture of meticulous planning and adherence to protocol. But perhaps there was something to be learned from human resilience. From the ability to look at an insurmountable challenge and think, well, let's see what we can do. Finally, Dr. Thix turned to the crew. Document every aspect of this procedure. There is much we do not understand, but perhaps this human approach has merit. Jake leaned back, folding his arms, a satisfied smile playing on his lips. Glad I could help. Now about my coffee, it's gone cold. Mind if I grab a refill? The alien stared, unsure if he was serious. Tula finally nodded, though her expression remained perplexed. Of course, if that is what you require. Jake laughed, patting her shoulder. Just kidding, Tula. This is good for now. He took one last look at the anomaly, which had settled into a rhythmic, subdued pulse. So, are we calling it a wrap? Dr. Thix and the others stood in stunned silence, watching as Jake collected his tools leaving behind a research team profoundly changed. For the first time, they understood why humans were known as the galaxy's most unpredictable species. Their ability to walk headfirst into chaos with nothing more than duct tape and confidence. As Jake exited, he paused, looking over his shoulder with a grin. Hey, if this ever happens again, just give me a shout. Mondays are kind of my specialty. The door slid shut behind him, leaving the alien team in a daze. Thix finally spoke, his voice soft with wonder. They survive on willpower, coffee, and duct tape. How extraordinary. With Jake's improvised adjustments, the anomaly appeared stable, for now. The once chaotic pulses had settled into a subdued rhythm, and the team of alien scientists exchanged cautious glances, not daring to breathe too easily. Dr. Thix was about to signal the end of the emergency protocols when suddenly a new wave of energy flared from the heart of the anomaly, sending a shockwave through the station. The entire control room jolted, consoles flickered, and alarms blared as red lights bathed the room. Jake, who had been heading toward the exit, stopped in his tracks, letting out a sigh. Should have known. Mondays never quit, huh? Dr. Thix's voice shook as he issued a command. All personnel, prepare for immediate stabilization procedures. Tula, recalibrate the particle containment field. Rixor, monitor the power core fluctuations. The scientists sprang into action, their faces tense. They'd been so close to restoring order, and yet here they were, facing another surge from the anomaly. The station systems strained to keep up, flickering erratically as they fought to maintain control. Jake strolled back into the room, hands in his pockets, observing the chaotic scene. Looks like things got a little too calm, he mused. Guess the universe wasn't done with us yet. Rixor shot him a bewildered look. You speak as though this were common. Do you often encounter such relentless disasters? Jake shrugged, adjusting his tool belt. Disasters have a way of piling up. You fix one thing, something else breaks. You just roll with it. Tula, frantically working at her console, called out, Human Jake, this new surge is ten times stronger than before. If we can't contain it, the entire station could destabilize. Jake nodded thoughtfully, eyeing the flickering lights. Sounds like we need a new plan, then. Mind if I take a look? Dr. Thix gestured for him to proceed, his voice laced with both desperation and hope. At this point, any strategy is better than none. Jake approached the main console his fingers tapping rapidly over the controls. He was calm, his gaze focused, yet there was an unmistakable ease in his movements, as though he'd faced worse and knew instinctively how to handle it. All right, Jake began. What we've got here is a feedback loop. The anomaly's energy is being amplified by our containment field. Every time we push it back, it comes back stronger. If we're going to stop this, we'll need to bend with it, not fight against it. Dr. Thix blinked, struggling to comprehend. You're suggesting we harmonize with the anomaly's energy? That's unprecedented, Jake grinned. First time for everything, right? Sometimes you've got to work with the chaos. The alien scientists watched in a mixture of awe and terror as Jake continued his adjustments, shifting the station's shielding field to resonate with the anomaly rather than opposing it. The console began displaying patterns they'd never seen before, 
waveforms that mirrored the anomaly's own fluctuations. Tula spoke up, her voice shaky. Human Jake, this is extremely risky. If we miscalculate, the entire station could implode. Jake gave her a reassuring pat on the shoulder. Relax, Tula. I've done this before. Well, not exactly this, but close enough. You trust me, right? She hesitated, glancing at Dr. Thix, who gave a reluctant nod. For now, we have no other options. As Jake fine-tuned the field settings, the anomaly's energy began to stabilize, following the new rhythm he'd imposed. The red lights dimmed and the alarms quieted, replaced by a steady hum that seemed almost peaceful. The aliens looked around, stunned, as the station settled into a calm they hadn't experienced in hours. Just as they began to feel a glimmer of hope, a harsh beep sounded from Rixer's console. His eyes widened in horror as he read the new data. The anomaly is expanding. It's consuming nearby energy fields, including the reactor core, Dr. Thix gasped. The reactor core? If it's breached, the energy release could destroy the station. Jake glanced at the data, his expression turning serious. All right, I didn't expect that. Looks like we're dealing with a bit more than a localized anomaly. This thing's hungry. Tula, panicking, grabbed Jake's arm. What do we do now? All our calculations indicate that containment is impossible. Jake paused, staring at the swirling data on the console. A spark of determination lit his eyes. We don't contain it. We starve it. The aliens blinked in confusion. Dr. Thix's brow furrowed. Starve it? How do you propose we deprive an anomaly of energy? Jake held up his coffee mug, now empty. Simple. We cut off its power supply. If it's feeding off the station's energy fields, we need to reroute the power so it can't reach them. Rixor looked skeptical. But rerouting the power could overload the backup systems. If the station loses power entirely, we'll be stranded. Jake grinned. Better stranded than, well, dead. Dr. Thix nodded reluctantly. Very well. Begin rerouting power from the auxiliary systems. Tula, monitor the anomaly's behavior as we proceed. As Jake and the alien team worked, they watched the anomaly carefully. Bit by bit, they diverted energy away from it, shutting down non-essential systems and leaving only the critical ones online. The lights dimmed further, casting the room in an eerie glow. Each station console displayed flickering readings as the power fluctuations spread. Finally, Rixor reported, The anomaly's energy absorption has slowed. It appears to be weakening. A relieved murmur spread through the room. But just as they thought they were making progress, the anomaly flared one last time, sending a powerful shockwave that rocked the station. Consoles sparked, and several screens shattered. The crew members were thrown off balance, gripping onto anything they could to avoid being flung across the room. Hold on, Jake yelled, bracing himself against a control panel. The wave subsided, but the damage was done. Smoke rose from several consoles, and the hum of the station's systems had dulled to a faint whimper. Emergency lights cast an ominous red glow over everything. Dr. Thix looked around, his eyes wide with panic. Report, what's the status of the anomaly? Tula examined her console, her face pale. The anomaly is stabilizing, but at the cost of severe system damage. We've lost contact with three sections of the station, and the reactor is running on emergency reserves. Rixor sighed, exhausted. If the reactor shuts down, we'll lose life support. Jake glanced at the flickering lights and let out a low whistle. Well, it's not pretty, but we bought ourselves some time. Dr. Thix turned to Jake, an unspoken question in his eyes. Is there any more you can do? Jake scratched his head, looking thoughtful. If we're going to get out of this... We're going to need one last push. There's an old trick we use back on Earth in situations like this. When the power's low, we restart everything, giving a fresh flow of energy. Might be enough to stabilize the reactor and put the anomaly back to sleep. Tula's eyes widened. A complete reset of the station systems? That's unprecedented. Jake chuckled, his tone calm despite the looming danger. Seems like this whole day's been unprecedented, hasn't it? Dr. Thix took a deep breath glancing at the weary faces of his team. Very well. Human Jake, initiate the reset sequence. Crew, brace yourselves. Jake moved to the central console, pulling up the emergency reset procedures. He glanced at the alien scientists, giving them a reassuring nod. Hold on to something. 
This could get bumpy. With a quick series of commands, Jake initiated the reset. All at once, the station's system shut down, leaving them in total darkness. The hum of machinery ceased, and for a few heart-stopping moments, there was only silence. Then, one by one, the systems flickered back to life. The consoles rebooted, lights blinked on, and the hum of the reactor slowly returned, stronger and steadier than before. As the screen stabilized, they showed a remarkable sight. The anomaly's energy readings had plummeted. The disturbance was finally under control. Dr. Thix let out a long breath, relief flooding his features. It's, it's working. The anomaly is stabilizing. The crew exchanged tired but relieved smiles. They had survived, thanks to the most unlikely of strategies and the audacity of one human who seemed unfazed by the impossible. Jake leaned against the console, looking around at the exhausted aliens. Well, there you have it. One anomaly tamed by the good old reset button. Rixor gave a weary chuckle. I still can't believe it. Your methods, they are so chaotic, so unpredictable. Jake grinned. That's the beauty of it. Sometimes you gotta embrace the chaos to find a solution. As the crew gathered themselves, Dr. Thix placed a hand on Jake's shoulder, his eyes full of newfound respect. Human Jake, I must admit, we would not have survived this without you. Your ingenuity, though, unorthodox, is remarkable. Jake shrugged. Just another day at work. Tula stepped forward, her voice soft. Thank you, Jake. You may have saved all of us. Jake gave them a grin. No worries. But next time, let's try to keep Mondays a little quieter, all right? The aliens chuckled, still processing the fact that this human, a species they once saw as primitive and unpredictable, had just saved their station. They had gained a new respect for humanity, and perhaps a hint of admiration for the strange resilience that seemed to drive them. With the anomaly finally contained, and the station systems running at a cautious stability, the control room settled into an exhausted silence. The alien scientists remained at their consoles, too stunned to move, processing the events that had just unfolded. Their eyes drifted to the human who had, against all logic and reason, managed to navigate the station through disaster. Dr. Thix leaned against his console, still catching his breath. His gaze lingered on Jake, who was busy sipping from a newly filled coffee cup, as if this were all part of a day's work. The alien scientist's mind spun with questions, not just about what had happened, but about the strange resilience of humanity itself. Human Jake, Dr. Thix began slowly, choosing his words with care, I must ask, how is it that your species has developed such an unorthodox approach to problem-solving? I've read that Earth is a chaotic place, but your calm, your confidence, it defies everything we know about safety and survival. Jake looked up, smiling at the question. Well, Doc, I guess it's in our nature. Earth is a bit of a wild place, yeah. But that's the thing. Humans grow up with storms, earthquakes, volcanoes, and all sorts of unpredictable stuff. So we learn to improvise. Some folks call it reckless. We call it adapting. Tula, still shaken by the crisis, crossed her arms as she considered his words. But your methods, they seem almost dangerous. We rely on procedures, simulations, carefully laid plans. How can you trust something as uncertain as improvisation? Jake shrugged. We didn't always have fancy tools or advanced tech. Back on Earth, most of our ancestors just had rocks and sticks but they found a way to survive. Over time, it taught us that sometimes you just have to dive in, even when you don't know exactly how things will turn out. The alien crew fell silent, trying to imagine a species raised in such conditions, accustomed to tackling the impossible with nothing but basic tools and sheer willpower. For beings used to relying on technology and protocol, the human's attitude was almost incomprehensible. Rixor finally spoke, his voice thoughtful. So, when faced with an impossible situation, you trust your instincts? Jake nodded. Exactly. You figure it out as you go. I mean, sure, sometimes things don't work out. But the point is, you keep trying. We call it a learning the hard way. And hey, a little risk keeps things interesting. Dr. Thix pondered this, his eyes narrowing as he tried to grasp the concept. And this tendency toward risk. Is it why humans take on the most dangerous jobs in the galaxy? We've noticed that your species has volunteered for missions 
even our most advanced androids deem too hazardous. Jake chuckled. Well, some of us just like a good challenge. But yeah, I think it's more than that. Humans. We're driven to explore, to see what's out there. If we didn't take risks, we'd never have made it to the stars in the first place. The alien scientists shared a look, each one wrestling with this foreign idea. For as long as they could remember, risk had been something to be avoided, an obstacle to be carefully navigated. And yet, here was a species that treated it as just another part of life, a constant companion rather than a threat. Tula sighed, her voice a mixture of awe and exasperation. To think that you treat danger as routine, it's both terrifying and impressive. Jake took another sip of his coffee, unfazed. That's Earth for you. You learn to roll with it or you don't make it very far. Plus, you find out pretty quick that you can handle more than you thought. The crew fell into a contemplative silence, absorbing this new perspective. They had always viewed humans as resilient but unpredictable, a species they could not fully understand. But now, they began to see that this adaptability, the willingness to face the unknown without fear, was perhaps the very thing that made humanity unique. After a moment, Rixor cleared his throat, his expression one of reluctant admiration. You humans, you're not like any species we've encountered. You defy logic, even science itself. How can you continue to function in such a chaotic existence? Jake smiled, setting his coffee cup down. It's simple, really. Chaos doesn't scare us. In fact, some of us thrive in it. You just have to find your balance. Dr. Thick shook his head, an expression of wonder on his face. Balance within chaos, I can hardly imagine it. Our worlds are structured, orderly, predictable. Perhaps, perhaps we've underestimated what it means to embrace uncertainty. Jake leaned back, a look of quiet satisfaction on his face. Well, Doc, maybe that's why humans and aliens make a good team. You bring the order, we bring the chaos, and somehow it all works out. Dr. Thicks gave him a faint smile. Indeed, perhaps there is wisdom in that approach. It seems there is much we could learn from your species. Tula hesitated, her voice soft. Do you ever fear it? This constant battle against the unknown? Jake shrugged. Sometimes, yeah, fear's natural. But the trick is not letting it stop you. You learn to live with it, maybe even use it. I guess in a way it keeps us sharp. The aliens listened, silent and thoughtful each one processing this new philosophy. Fear for them had always been a warning, a signal to step back, to retreat. But for humans, it seemed to be just another part of the journey. Finally, Dr. Thick spoke, his tone both serious and respectful. Human Jake, your people have a strength we cannot comprehend, not just physical resilience, but something deeper, a resolve that allows you to face impossible odds without hesitation. Jake's smile was soft, almost reflective. It's just how we're wired. We don't always get it right, and sometimes we make a mess of things. But at the end of the day, we keep going. That's the real trick. The alien scientists exchanged looks of quiet admiration. They had spent their lives in pursuit of knowledge, of understanding the universe down to its last molecule. Yet here was a human teaching them something they had never considered, that survival was not just about intelligence or technology. It was about heart, about the willingness to confront the unknown and embrace it, however terrifying it might be. Dr. Thix extended a hand to Jake, a gesture of respect. Thank you, human Jake. You've shown us a perspective we would never have discovered on our own. Jake shook his hand, his grip firm and reassuring. Any time, Doc. And hey, if you ever find yourself dealing with more anomalies, you know who to call. The crew laughed softly their voices tinged with both amusement and relief. In the aftermath of the crisis, they had gained more than just survival. They had gained an understanding, however small, of the indomitable spirit that made humans so unique. As they began to disperse, returning to their duties with a newfound sense of purpose, Dr. Thicks found himself pondering what he had learned. Perhaps there was a lesson here, a deeper truth that transcended scientific knowledge. Humanity, with all its imperfections and contradictions, had shown him that survival was more than a formula. It was an art. For the first time in his life, he felt the stirrings of something he had never considered. Curiosity, not just about the universe, 
but about this strange and fascinating species called humanity. As Jake made his way toward the exit, Tula called out, her voice hesitant but filled with sincerity. Human Jake, thank you. I don't think any of us will forget what you've taught us. Jake turned, giving her a reassuring smile. Anytime, Tula. Remember, don't let the chaos get to you. Sometimes it's just life's way of keeping things interesting. With that, he walked out, leaving the alien scientists in quiet contemplation. As the doors slid shut behind him, the crew looked at each other, each one changed, each one carrying a piece of newfound respect for the species that had taught them something beyond science. Dr. Thix glanced at his team, a faint smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. Perhaps we have more to learn from humans than we once thought. The others nodded, a silent agreement that echoed the sentiments left behind by their unexpected hero. And though they returned to their tasks, their hearts were filled with a newfound curiosity. A curiosity not just about the cosmos, but about the resilience that lay within every human. Despite the newfound stability, the station was not yet out of danger. As the alien team returned to their consoles, a soft but persistent hum began to emanate from the heart of the anomaly. The control room lights flickered, casting eerie shadows as a familiar sense of dread filled the air. Rixer glanced nervously at the readings on his console. Uh, Dr. Thix, I'm detecting a new surge. The anomaly's energy levels are increasing again, exponentially this time, he said, his voice tinged with alarm. Dr. Thix clenched his jaw, scanning the data. This anomaly, it appears to be feeding off our energy systems, consuming whatever residual power we have left. If we cannot contain it, we may face a full structural collapse. Jake, who had just re-entered the control room with a fresh cup of coffee, raised an eyebrow at the renewed tension. Looks like I missed something fun. Need a hand? Tula turned to him, panic evident in her voice. Human Jake, the anomaly is growing stronger with each passing second. Our calculations, none of them account for this level of escalation. Jake took a deep breath, his expression thoughtful as he assessed the situation. All right. Sounds like we're dealing with a real monster here. If it's feeding on power, we might need to completely cut off its source. What's the primary power draw in this section? Rixer answered quickly. The reactor core is our main source of energy, but shutting it down would mean losing life support and station controls. It would render us completely helpless. Jake gave a slow nod, tapping his fingers on his coffee cup as he considered the options. Helpless, maybe. But it could also starve the anomaly, right? If we're the only power source left, it won't have anything to latch onto. Dr. Thix's eyes widened as the implications sank in. You're suggesting a complete shutdown of everything? Jake nodded. Exactly, a hard reset. We cut off every power source we can, let the anomaly fizzle out on its own. It's risky, but it might be our only shot. The alien scientists exchanged horrified glances. Shutting down the entire station went against every protocol they had. Yet, as they looked at the swelling anomaly, they knew they had no other choice. Dr. Thix finally nodded. Very well, begin shutdown procedures. All non-essential power systems are to be disconnected immediately. Redirect any remaining energy to life support and containment fields. The crew sprang into action, their hands moving swiftly over consoles as they initiated the shutdown sequence. The station dimmed, emergency lights casting an ominous glow over the control room as system after system powered down. The hum of machinery grew faint, and an eerie silence fell over the room, broken only by the occasional beep of a console. As the last of the power faded, the anomaly flickered, its pulsating waves slowing as it struggled against the dwindling energy. The alien crew watched, breathless, as the powerful force seemed to weaken, shrinking in size with each passing second. But just when they began to hope, the anomaly unleashed a sudden surge, a final, desperate attempt to feed. The station shuddered violently, sending a cascade of sparks from the ceiling. Tula let out a cry as her console burst into flames, and Rixor barely managed to pull her away in time. Jake gritted his teeth, bracing himself as the floor buckled beneath him. Looks like it's not going down without a fight. Hang on, everyone! Dr. Thix's voice rang out over the chaos. Rixor, divert remaining power to emergency stabilizers. 
We need to hold this together just a little longer. Rixor scrambled to reroute the power, his hands shaking as he fought to maintain control. Jake, meanwhile, was moving from console to console, using duct tape and whatever scraps he could find to patch damaged panels and keep the systems running just long enough to finish the job. The anomaly began to flicker erratically, its once intimidating presence reduced to a shadow of its former self. But its energy output remained dangerous, sparking arcs of electricity that lashed across the room, narrowly missing the crew members. Jake, seeing the danger, shouted over the noise. All right, we're almost there, but we've got to push it one last time. Thix, can you boost the containment field with whatever power we've got left? Dr. Thix nodded, his face set in determination. Yes, but it will leave us vulnerable. Once the anomaly is contained, we'll have no reserve power remaining. Jake flashed a reassuring smile. Just long enough for us to finish this, trust me. Dr. Thix, driven by a newfound faith in his human ally, issued the order. Activate the containment field, full power. Rixor's fingers flew over the console, his movements swift and precise despite the chaos around him. The containment field flared to life, bathing the anomaly in a bright, pulsating glow. For a moment it seemed to hold, trapping the anomaly within its bounds. But then the anomaly surged again, testing the limits of the containment field, sending ripples of energy that threatened to shatter the barrier. Jake, sensing the containment weakening, shouted to the crew, All right, everyone, this is it. We're doing an emergency stabilization maneuver. Redirect whatever's left into a direct feedback loop. It'll collapse on itself. Tula's eyes widened. A feedback loop? That's, that's highly unstable. If it fails, we could all be vaporized. Jake nodded grimly. If we don't try, it'll tear the station apart. This is our last shot. Are you with me? The alien crew exchanged frightened glances, but each one nodded, their faces set with determination. Under Jake's guidance, they rerouted the remaining power, initiating the feedback loop that would force the anomaly to implode on itself. As the loop engaged, the anomaly shrieked, an unearthly sound that reverberated through the station, rattling their very bones. The containment field flared one last time, then began to contract, forcing the anomaly into an ever-tightening space. Jake and the crew held their breath, each second stretching into an eternity as they watched the anomaly struggle, twist, and finally, collapse. The control room was plunged into silence. The lights flickered and died, leaving them in total darkness. A few tense moments passed before the emergency systems flickered back to life, casting a faint glow over the weary crew. The anomaly was gone. The station systems, though battered, were intact. The alien scientists looked around, still dazed, unable to process the fact that they had survived. Jake, who had slumped against a console, let out a long sigh, a grin spreading across his face. Well, that was a workout. Dr. Thix approached him, his voice filled with awe. Human, Jake. You have saved us. Despite all odds, you managed to do the impossible. Jake shrugged modestly. Eh, just another Monday. Tula let out a shaky laugh, her eyes glistening with relief. I don't understand how you humans can face such destruction with humor. You truly are a remarkable species. Jake chuckled. You know what they say, laughter's the best medicine. Plus, if you can't laugh, you'll just end up crying, right? Rixer placed a hand on Jake's shoulder, his face filled with gratitude. Thank you, Jake. We, we would have been lost without you. Jake gave him a friendly clap on the back. All in a day's work, Rixor. And hey, maybe next time we'll handle things without quite so much chaos. The alien crew shared a laugh, a sound that carried a mixture of relief, gratitude, and newfound respect. Jake had not only saved their lives, he had shown them a strength that defied logic, a resilience they had never thought possible. As they gathered themselves, checking consoles and assessing damage, Dr. Thix turned to Jake his expression serious but warm. Human Jake, on behalf of my team and myself, thank you. You've shown us a path we could never have walked alone. Jake nodded, humbled. Glad I could help, Doc. And hey, if you ever need someone to handle the impossible, you know where to find me. The crew chuckled, their spirits lifted by his words. Though the station was damaged and much repair work lay ahead, they knew they would face it with a renewed sense of purpose and with a newfound respect 
for the resilience of humanity. As Jake left the control room, the alien team looked after him with expressions of awe and admiration. Dr. Thick spoke softly, almost to himself. Perhaps, perhaps there is more to humanity than we could ever understand. Rixor nodded, his voice filled with quiet reverence. Yes, they are creatures of chaos, and yet within that chaos, they find strength. The crew remained in reflective silence, each one changed by the experience. For the first time, they understood that survival was not merely about avoiding risk. It was about facing it head-on, with courage, adaptability, and yes, even a bit of duct tape. As they returned to their stations, they knew that their lives and their understanding of the universe had been forever altered by one extraordinary human and his improbable methods. The crew spent hours repairing the station's systems, their movements slower than usual, each of them physically and emotionally drained. The control room, once alive with flashing lights and urgent activity, was now a quiet, almost somber place, filled with the soft hum of restored machinery. Jake, having stayed to help as much as he could, was finishing up one last inspection, duct tape still hanging from his tool belt. The aliens watched him in silence, each of them replaying the day's events in their minds, struggling to process what had happened. Dr. Thix approached Jake, his expression one of deep contemplation. Human Jake, we owe you more than we can express. This crisis, it has shown us not only the strength of your kind, but a new way of thinking. Your willingness to embrace the unknown, to face chaos without fear, it is something we cannot fully comprehend. Jake gave him a humble smile, nodding thoughtfully. You don't have to understand it completely, Doc. That's the thing about humans. We don't always understand it ourselves. We just do what we have to do. Tula stepped forward, her gaze full of gratitude. Human Jake, before today, I believed that protocol and precision were the only ways to survive. But you, you showed us something different. You showed us that survival sometimes means taking risks, even if it goes against everything we've been taught. Jake chuckled softly, scratching the back of his head. Yeah, well, humans don't always make sense. Sometimes we do things because they just feel right. And sometimes they're messy and they don't work out. But we keep trying. That's the important part. The crew exchanged glances, each of them reflecting on his words. They had been trained to avoid risk, to seek control in all things. And yet here was a human who had faced an existential threat with nothing but confidence, duct tape, and a little luck. Rixer spoke up, his voice soft with admiration. Your resilience, it is not something we can replicate. It is unique to you and your kind. I never thought I would say this, but perhaps we need humans more than we realized. Jake gave him a reassuring smile. Hey, it's mutual. We might be good at handling chaos, but there's a lot we can learn from you too. You guys bring a whole new level of precision and order. Maybe it's that mix that makes it work. Dr. Thix nodded, his expression one of newfound respect. Yes, perhaps it is that balance. Together we achieved something none of us could have done alone. They stood in reflective silence, each of them coming to terms with the events of the day. For the first time they saw humans not as unpredictable outsiders, but as allies, beings whose unique approach to life could complement their own structured methods. Finally, Dr. Thix extended a hand to Jake, a gesture of camaraderie and gratitude. Human Jake, you have our respect. If ever there is a need, the Galactic Research Council will welcome you, and any human, as an honored member of our team. Jake shook his hand warmly, his face breaking into a grin. Thanks, Doc. That means a lot. And who knows? Maybe I'll take you up on that offer someday. Tula, watching the exchange, smiled as well. Perhaps we can learn to face the unknown with a bit of courage as you do. You've shown us that even in the face of the impossible, there is always hope. Jake looked at them, his expression softening. That's what it comes down to. Hope sometimes, it's all we've got. And sometimes, it's enough. The crew nodded, each of them carrying a new understanding in their hearts. They had faced the unimaginable, and they had survived, not through protocol and precision, but through a willingness to adapt to trust each other, and to take that leap of faith. As Jake gathered his tools preparing to leave, Tula stopped him one last time. 
Jake, if I may ask, how do you humans stay so calm in the face of danger? How do you continue, even when the odds seem insurmountable? Jake paused, considering her question. Finally, he answered, We just remind ourselves that we've made it this far. Earth isn't the easiest place to live. And yeah, we make mistakes, sometimes big ones. But every day we get up and we try again. I think that's just who we are. Rixer nodded, a faint smile on his face. Perhaps that is the greatest strength of all, the willingness to continue, no matter what. With a final wave, Jake turned to leave, a sense of quiet satisfaction radiating from him. The alien crew watched him go, their expressions a mixture of respect and curiosity. For the first time, they truly understood what made humanity remarkable, the courage to face the unknown, to embrace chaos, and to find strength in adversity. As the doors slid shut behind him, Dr. Thix looked around at his team, his voice solemn but hopeful. Today we have witnessed something extraordinary, humanity. They are indeed unlike any species we know, and perhaps we could all learn to embrace a bit of their resilience. The crew murmured their agreement, each of them changed by the experience. They had faced the impossible, and they had survived. And in doing so, they had gained not only an ally, but a new perspective on what it meant to live, to adapt, and to overcome. As they resumed their duties, a sense of quiet determination settled over them. The station was still damaged, and there was much work to be done. But they carried a piece of that human resilience with them, a newfound understanding that would guide them in the days to come. Months later, the Galactic Research Council would revise its protocols, incorporating some of the human concepts they had once dismissed as reckless. And every revision started with the same line. In cases of extreme anomaly, consult human expertise if available. For they knew now that humanity's strength lay not in its technology or knowledge, but in its spirit. A spirit that could face even the most impossible odds and find a way through. As they looked to the stars, they knew that their journey had only just begun. Several months had passed since the incident with the anomaly, but the memory remained vivid in the minds of the station's crew. Life had returned to normal. Systems were fully repaired, protocols had been revised, and research had resumed. But something fundamental had shifted. In the quiet moments between experiments and calculations, the alien scientists often found themselves reflecting on that extraordinary day. They had faced a threat unlike any they had ever encountered, a force that defied logic and resisted their carefully planned responses. And in their moment of need, it had been a human who showed them a different path. Dr. Thix, reviewing the day's findings at his console, couldn't help but smile as he read the new safety protocol the Council had recently approved. It was titled Directive 12, Emergency Procedures for Uncontained Anomalies. And there in the protocol's notes was a simple yet profound statement. In extreme circumstances, consult human personnel for adaptive solutions. Across the station, similar sentiments echoed. The alien crew had begun incorporating human practices into their routines. They approached problems with more flexibility, entertained unconventional ideas, and occasionally, though with some hesitation, used duct tape as a temporary fix. The lessons Jake had imparted had taken root, changing the station's culture in subtle but lasting ways. One day, a data capsule arrived from Earth addressed to the crew of the Xylar 7 research station. It was a message from Jake, who had since returned to his home planet. Tula gathered the team to hear his words, her voice filled with a quiet excitement. The capsule activated, projecting a small hologram of Jake with his signature grin. Hey team, just checking in from Earth. I wanted to thank you for letting me be part of the adventure up there. You guys taught me a lot too. It's not every day I get to see such dedication to keeping everything perfect. Maybe one of these days, We'll find the perfect balance, your order and our chaos, working side by side. He paused, chuckling. And by the way, I hear the council added a protocol about calling in humans for extreme situations. That's pretty cool. Just remember, if things ever get too weird, I'm only a message away. Stay safe and don't forget. Sometimes the best solutions are the ones you don't expect. The message ended, but the warmth lingered, filling the room. Dr. Thix looked around at his team, 
seeing in their faces the same respect and admiration he felt. Jake had become more than a colleague. He had become a friend, a symbol of the resilience that had carried them through the storm. In the months that followed, the crew often found themselves thinking about humanity's peculiar approach to life. They began to approach challenges with a bit more courage, a bit more humor. Even in moments of uncertainty, they found themselves asking, what would Jake do? And smiling at the thought. As the Galactic Research Council continued its exploration of the cosmos, humans became a more common sight on alien research stations. Their adaptability and courage valued in ways no one had anticipated. And on Xyler 7, the crew knew that whatever challenges awaited them, they were ready, not just with protocols and technology, but with a newfound willingness to face the unknown with open hearts and steady hands. Because they had learned, thanks to one human and a little duct tape, that sometimes the greatest strength lay not in resisting chaos, but in embracing it.